Welcome to 4 Wheeling SA. In this episode, I'm upgrading the 12 volt system in my Bush Lapa caravan. So, initially, I didn't have anything in it. There was basically just a straight um, wire from the A frame to the battery to charge it. I had various options. I could have put in a, a National Lunar solenoid solution or I could look at the DC DC solution. So what I initially had in is one of the SHDP 12 ampere DC DC chargers and I've been using this now for like six years but obviously it ended the it's where it reached the end of its life and unfortunately these units cannot be repaired anymore HDP doesn't exist anymore um, maybe some of the um, work has been taken over by Volmark or I also as a backup at one of these PWM controllers, they're not very expensive, I think this was like 500 Rand. I had a couple of, of, of occasions where I had to use it, one of these when the solar started to stop working on there, and at least you have something to charge your batteries. Maybe not as effective as other things are there, but it's still a, a usable solution. So I did go out and I looked at what, what's available. One of the options was to see if this can be repaired. It cannot be repaired. Okay, then the next thing is what else is there? What what replaces that? There's a Volma core unit, which does a pretty much the same thing. It basically has alternator or um, battery from your vehicle's input as well as solar input. I'm not so sure if it's really if it's such a small I think it's a good solution, but it I don't think it's got all the bells and whistles with it. So the next option for me was to look at one of these Red Arc units. They also have um, vehicle input or let's say alternator input and then solar input and it's basically all in one unit, which is quite nice. And then I started looking around more and then I uh, found the well-known Victron products. The Victron is basically, it's two separate units, a DC-DC charger and a MPPT controller. End of the day, I had to look at the cost, what it's going to cost me, and the Victron unit base, units based on what I will get was the most cost-effective unit for me, and it addressed my problems. So I ended up with a Victron DC-DC 30 amp charger, the non-isolated one, and then a 100-15 MPPT controller. So with the DC-DC charger, I was able to, or we were able to mount it close to the battery, very much of the same position where the HDP charger was under the, the bed of the bush lapa. It's well protected there, it's probably well ventilated as well, and obviously it's mounted to the steel body of the caravan, so obviously some of the heat will be taken away there as well. What I also had to do is I had to replace the wiring inside the caravan. This was the cable coming from the um, from the A-frame, which for this a 30 amp solution is just not thick enough. So we did put in thicker cables. I think initially it was fine. It was fine with the HDP because it did not pull a lot of current. So yeah, thicker cables is just a better solution. This complete cable. We've changed its thicker gauge wiring. I think it's 16 square miles or something like that. And then also this neat little cover that will keep dust out when we're not using the trailer. So yeah, we've removed all the old wiring, which was too thin because basically this thickness and was in there. So it was not really thick enough for the purpose. And it now runs in the chassis rail if you can see it here you can see there it goes so it's not in the trailer anymore then the second thing that we've installed was the NPPT controller the problem now or what I had is that obviously I've been using only one cable for the for the alternator charge and uh, the solar charge but now with two units that means two cables so what we've done is we've put a, uh, a connection point, a Brad Harrison plug behind the mud flap of the caravan and it's very easy to connect it or disconnect it. There are various other positions that you can put it as well. I prefer that position and it's nice and easy, accessible and to remove it. So the solar input 
is now on the side. I know some people place it over there with the um, where your AC current is coming in or your AC power is coming in but we've placed it here and I must say it's pretty neat and it's quite easy to pull it out so yeah and a nice label on there solar um, what's nice about this unit it's got solar oh, it's got a bluetooth connection as well so you can see how much wattage or what current you are putting into your batteries and you can move your panels if you want to be to get the maximum um, charge out of them so for both these options the dc dc charger and the mppt controller it's very important to make sure that it's properly fused now i would say that what was in the in the system was not the best way in terms of fuses so each thing has got a fuse now um, make sure that even your your positive cable to your to the second batteries because of the two batteries in here is also fused it was not wirings were exposed we had to put sleeves around them to protect them from rubbing through it's thick it, it does have a thick um outer on it but i would say it's still better maybe not in a day's a day's time it will be a problem but, but three years down the line it might rub through and you might have a burned out caravan so always do it properly just have a look at the how neat the cables were done everything in a sleeve um, everything is fused none of these fuses were here so it's a it's a lot better than what it was before in terms of using the um, the systems um, if I get to the DC DC charger there was a couple of tricks to to get around the first one is that uh, the standard pin that you get on the app that it shows you it's six zeros doesn't work the correct pin is actually on the side of the unit itself and make sure you get it before you have to before you install it otherwise it's a bit tricky to get to it the other thing is to make sure that you select it as a charger it's, it's something else in there in the settings and the other thing is you need to select the right battery now i've got lead as batteries and they are not in the list so I did a bit of searching and I said, no, you must use the gel option, big trunk gel or something, option one, that will probably work the best for this application. And I think to remember as well as if your vehicle has a smart alternator and if you go to the app, it says it will only start charging once the smart alternator is sending 14 volts to your battery. And that doesn't really always happen. It started up at, let's say, maybe 13.2, which means you're not going to charge your battery so based on some youtube tutorials that i've watched i was able to adjust it to 13 volts and that seems to work i actually tested it and i just plugged it in and the, it might be on my vehicle and it didn't charge it at all when i moved it down to 13 volts it started charging the unit so that's maybe something to keep in mind i've heard some comments of people saying but it's not charging it properly so that's probably the reason why so what i did as well i just now did a quick check here at home and i plugged in the solar panel make sure it was charging um plug it into the vehicle to make sure it's charging and don't wait until i get out there then to discover it's not charging and by that you learn a couple of things because you're plugging your solar panels you said but it's only putting in out 18 volt you know 18 watts how can it be and you realize now but it's because it's also it's a smart charger so it's it's looking after your battery it's not just pumping all the the current in there so it adjusted it so that's why it only needed 18 watts so that's what it's giving it um when i switch to like a a, a fridge or something you could see that it's getting more current or from the from the solar panels so for the dc dc charges you get an isolated version and a non-isolated version i'm just going to read it for you just to make sure sure that i come across right so isolated dc dc charges is that isolated charges have separate input and output circuits preventing electrical noise and ground loop issues they are often used in situations where sensitive electronics are present or when multiple grounding points are concerned Typically in things like ambulances where they've got a lot of electronic equipment in there. So non-isolated charges share a common ground between the input and the output, which simplifies the design and installation. However, they may introduce electrical noise, which can affect sensitive electronics. Now, there's not really sensitive electronics in there. There's a friction in there, there's a water pump in there, and there's some LED lights. So there's no need to 
go overboard and um, that was the best icing option I got as well so that's why I've installed it and it should not be an issue I actually see a lot of the examples on YouTube videos is that they are using non-isolated but if you really want to use isolated then it will work just as well just something else to remember in terms of installation make sure that you get a, a proper installer so basically this is coming from the DC DC charger solar panel that's from the Victron AC DC and then that is for the second battery that's in there um, I've had it out a couple of places and yeah, you sometimes think well they should know what they are doing and then they don't when you open it up it's like okay this was a something that was it's a it's an accident that's waiting to happen so just to make sure and, and make sure that they use proper fuses go have a look at the wiring diagrams of the equipment see if it makes sense look if the work is neat if it's just wires all over and crossing each other um yeah i mean at the end of the day it needs to look neat as well it makes fault finding fault finding much easier for now i can see where there's the if if a, if a fuse fails and you just have four black fuses there which one is it now you need to open it up is this the the solo one is this the dc dc so everything is probably properly marked uh, and easy to find i've used g4 outdoors for this installation i'm very happy with the work that they've done here um unfortunately i was not paid for that i had to pay for it myself and at the end of the day this exercise did work me out a bit more expensive than what i initially thought it was going to be um but the advantage is now that i've got peace of mind when i go to Namibia in a month's time i know everything is probably properly installed i'm not going to have most likely not to have any problems so yeah at the end of the day it's it, you spend a bit more now but then you know later on it's gonna it's gonna work and you're not gonna have problems instead of just having slapping a couple of things there do you do it yourself and then you might miss something which can lead you losing a whole caravan which is a, a bit more expensive than what i had to spend but thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was helpful try to explain it the way i've seen it i've experienced it see you in the next video